Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, many of you might have thought I got you here by some bogus clickbait. How to make a balloon out of flour. Of course, that can't be done right. Well, as it turns out, maybe it can. Before we get started, just do me a quick favour. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. So you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. Now the single ingredient we're going to use for this particular experiment or practical is going to be strong white flour. So what is gluten and what exactly does it look like? That's what we're going to find out today. Now first of all, in terms of what gluten actually is, gluten is a mixture of two proteins found in flour. One's called glutenin, one's called gliadin. And when we knead the flour, when we add water and we knead, the more we knead, we mix those two proteins together and they form a long stretchy protein called gluten. So when our bread, in particular, our bread rises, the mixture dough has the ability to stretch. Without gluten, the dough remains quite dense and doesn't stretch at all. But what does gluten actually look like? That's what we're going to find out today. So today we're going to make some gluten and we're going to examine its properties. And we'll get to the balloon part in a little bit. So here we go. This really couldn't be easier. Just for the sake of speed, I'm going to use a food processor because I'm going to make a very simple dough. I've got my flour here. I've got, I've got 200 grams of strong flour. Now we're not making a food product, so I don't worry about taste or anything like that. It's just an experiment really. So in there we've got flour, and into that, while the, the food process is mixing, I'm going to add in 150 mils of water, thereabouts, just enough water to form um, a good dough. I don't want the dough too sticky because I'm going to need to, to knead it. So here we go. So I've got our dough, it's just combined. All I'm gonna do now is give it a little bit of kneading because remember, it's the kneading that helps make our dough nice and stretchy because we are creating gluten. So I'm just gonna knead this for about five minutes. Okay, as you can see, a good indication that our dough is well kneaded. It goes really beautifully smooth. Now, despite what it looks like, We've now formed a good bit of gluten from our 200 grams of flour. The only thing is we can't see the gluten because it's surrounded by all the starch. From this amount of flour, about 12 or 13% of this is protein. So everything else you're seeing around this, the other 80 odd, 87 or so percent is starch. So in order to see the protein, we've got to wash out the starch. So a nice, beautiful, smooth dough. You can see how nice and stretchy it is. Normally that would be perfect if we're making, say, a pizza base, but for this particular experiment, all that starch is stopping us from seeing the protein that we've developed. So now we've got to wash away all the starch and see what we're left with. So through that, I'm just gonna run it on some cold water and keep massaging it. until all the starch is gone. And let's see what we're left with. Okay, we're about halfway through, and as you can see, the mixture's changed quite a bit now. So now we're getting down to just the gluten. So the water's still murky and white, which means there's still a lot of starch to wash off. But we can see that we're starting to look like, get something that looks very, very different than the flour we start, than the dough we started off with. Because we're revealing the actual protein, which is gluten. So we'll see what that looks like at the very end now. Okay, and our final rinse. And here we have it. Pure gluten. Now what I like to do with gluten really is give it a little bit of time to settle. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge so it can, so all the protein gluten can just sort of mesh and chill and sort of join together quite nicely and settle down. And then we're gonna come back and have a look at what it's like. Already, we can see the stretchy nature of our gluten. And here is our gluten. Ah, all of a sudden now, I don't seem so crazy, do I? So this is that same ball of flour, but this time, all the starch has been washed out. And look, what do we have? Look at that. 
All right, so here we are. I'm just gonna try and thin it out without tearing it or breaking it. It's about the same kind of consistency thickness. There's a little bit of hole in there, so I've gotta be careful. We can't have a balloon with a hole in it. And then I'm gonna see if I can blow at least part of this thing off. So let's give it a shot. Oh! <laughs> okay, so this is our pure gluten. We've already discovered exactly how flexible it can be because we saw it inflated like a balloon. Now we're going to see what happens when we heat it up to see what, how that changes the texture. And here we go. Here we have our cooked gluten. Looks quite a bit like meat, doesn't it? Now this, in many cases, is used as a meat alternative. Let's go close up, you can see. See how it tears apart. You can season this with different things. I think what we'll probably do in the future, we'll do a seitan recipe, which is uh, a protein made from, from gluten. As you can see, it's got a thick, tugging consistency, a bit like meat. Now, I season this one a little bit, just so we can make it a little bit edible. Let's see what it tastes like. I mean, it's not seasoned properly, but here we go. Mm, that ain't bad. I season this one with a little bit of rock salt and some soy sauce. And I sear it in a frying pan. Quite chewy, kind of a meaty consistency. Really interesting that you can get something that's a bit like meat from flour. Crazy, right? And there we have it. How to make a balloon from flour. Now I think we managed to achieve that. I think we've got a pretty decent result. And we've learned all about the protein in flour, which is gluten and we've actually managed to see what protein what protein what gluten actually looks like so once again thanks for joining me at food tech 101 don't forget to like share and subscribe food tech 101 is on facebook and instagram um so you can follow us there as always my name is mr Lieber, but you can call me sir a thing we know.